of our flagship program morning express live on adbn television 11th october 2024 we are commemorating the international day of the girl child like we said before the break the theme for this year's celebration is girls vision for the future we're also narrowing it down to the peculiar challenges affecting the nigerian girl child well in our studios this morning we're also joined by our guest who is the president of empower her choices Nikurai Martin, and she's not alone in the studio. She also has a girl child in the studio, Rata Benedict. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, you're both welcome. Uh, let me start off with uh, Rata. It's uh, your day, <laughs> the International Day for the Girl Child. How do you feel about um, this commemoration of a very special event? I feel it's a very good one. Looking at my training at Belham by Empower Her Choices Pregnant Prevention, initiative it has been really a real a roller coaster because i've really learned a lot from my coach about grooming horses taking care of them and it has it has killed elderness from like how do i put it now you, you you're no longer idle you, yes. you keep busy i keep busy yeah i have something doing something to keep me over the girl child. Yes. You know, there are a lot of girl child that are very idle. People don't have people. Like, men think they are useless in the world in Nigeria specifically. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, well let me let me come to you, uh, Nikora. <laughs> yeah. She has quite uh, beautifully put the works that you do, or some of the yes. advocacy works that you do for the girl child, uh, in, in a very perfect way. Now, let yes. me let me just hear it from the horse's mouth. Now, what? What exactly do you do uh, under your foundation for the girl child? Okay, um, so Empower Her Choices is an underage pregnancy prevention initiative targeted towards adolescent and teen girls, as it says, against underage pregnancy. So we try to engage and empower them through our sports programs, our um, skill acquisition programs, and our computer literacy programs. We also have a mentorship program, which is under the Pada Girl program, which we go talk about sex education, hygiene, and uh, just mentorship. You know, some days, some people just want to vent. You just want to be around uh, another girl, another woman, so that you can just, just express yourself. So it's, it's something like that. So under the sports program currently, which we launched, we are doing a stable hand training, which is the first of its kind in Nigeria, where women are engaging in equestrian sports. Um, uh, currently, there aren't more than a dozen uh, a female, especially in the polo aspect of the, 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 the equestrian sport, which is the most recognized one in Nigeria. So we're trying to include more career opportunities inside there because like, look at the Paris Olympics. Um, there were so many equestrian sports from dressage, vaulting, um, jumping, and, and the rest, rest of them and stable hands who are literally like the engine room of the equestrian sports. So without stable hands, you wouldn't even have uh, a proper running uh, um, stable or ranch. So now bringing women, which is, there isn't any female stable hand in the country. So now bringing that into the, the sphere, it has really uh, um, ignited a lot of equestrian interest, not just in stable hand, but polo, dressage. We have so many women right now, close to like 15, that we have trained and are going to be graduating. So yes, that's pretty much it. Engaging them to remove that idleness that people, like she said, think you are just jobless or useless in the society. That's why you're here. But 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 how is that coming along? And um, are, are you getting the much needed support from stakeholders, especially uh, the parents and guardians of these girl uh, children or girls that you sort of uh, train under your initiative? Yes, there, there is a lot of support. There is a lot of um, pushback as well. But I think the support should be recognized much more because um, sensitiz sensitization is like a, a, a step at a time. People need to open their minds around it. I started basketball when I was in GS2. That was a long time ago. And even then, it was a problem for me outside of my school setting. Like he, he knows he was my classmate back in Ginji Gosa. So he knows like it was it was outside of the school setting is a challenge because they tend to tag females in sports generally as uh, promiscuous women. Unfortunately, that's where most men are. 
But why would you keep driving and, and, and shaming that sport and saying it's promiscuous women or girls that go there? People that have interests support them and don't talk down on that sport, so or, on that space. So um, I think we've come a long way from, from where I started to where we are, where parents like uh, Rautas uh, uh, are like championing. I spoke with her father before they came. He was like, I need to know what the program is about. And I had to send him everything. And he was like, I'm very pleased with this. And OK, yes, I'm going to give you my whole daughter's support. Her family is behind you. And yeah, so this is it. There are challenges, but the the... The good part is we're coming out successfully and triumphantly, yeah. Now, just to talk about the role of mentorship, I know you've referenced how much of your upbringing, especially with the kind of education we were afforded where yes. sports was prioritized and yes. inculcated into our school curriculum. Yeah. But for you, did you have mentorship in coming up with this idea? What spurred you into coming up with this initiative? Um, um, the, the, the birthplace of this initiative is, for me, being a teen mother myself when i it, when it was my time during my time i wasn't i wasn't mentored enough i wasn't allowed to thrive unfortunately a lot of adults were very very shameful shameless not even shameful very shameless in the sense that instead of encouraging or sending good words to the parents of these children my parents they always said you know she's she's following boys she's doing that and then it destroyed my my morale it destroyed my drive and you know the boys that they were claiming i was following now since i wasn't going to that basketball i was idle and then i i take responsibility for my actions however society needs to take accountability for their part that they play in in the lives of these girls you have to mentor them with the words you say let it be encouraging. If you have nothing nice to say or encouraging, just keep quiet. You don't understand. They try to understand. You know, so I try to like um, find people that align in my growth. I found people along the line that encouraged me. You know, and then over time, you know, the parents and the people that said nay about it, they get to see that, okay, it is not what they thought. And But a child shouldn't have to go through all of those hoops to prove to adults. Adults are supposed to mentor children. So, yes, I think from that angle, um, the mentorship, the, 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 the nurturing, the village, children had or we were thought that okay children had you know it takes a village to raise it's almost non-existent now so that is what i'm pretty much doing you know building that village around children let's come back to router router yes. it's about the stable hands yes. did you always have a love for horses growing up what are some of the sports besides horse riding that you like okay i really love to watch basketball like not play but i really love to watch it my brother he loves playing basketball. So anytime he goes there to play, it's mostly him and his friends that are guys there. So I just go there, watch him play. And then my mom be like, why are you, why are you always going there? They're always against it. So be like, you're a girl, be at home, cook, all these type of things. Yeah. But do you love being at home and cooking? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but I love cooking. Now, now, is it striking this balance? There are traditional roles over time that yeah. families have now restricted certain gender of children to doing. And even statistically speaking, it's not only in Nigeria. Yeah. Globally, we're told that between 5 to 14 girls spend over 160 million hours doing unpaid domestic work. Now, in breaking the stereotypes, what's your message to Nigerians and our viewers this morning in embracing initiatives that open girls up to sports and other extracurricular activities that help shape them beyond just educational certificates? Uh, my message is, you know this popular saying, what a man can do, a woman can do even better. I wouldn't say that. I would say that what a man can do, a woman can nurture even better. Because um, giving example from the equestrian sports, when you see the way the women handle and groom the horses, it's more, 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 more natural, more, more caring. And, and, and more appealing than the way the, the men are a bit crude. And in um, international um, spheres where you see the equestrian sport is majorly dominated by women because they say like um, the women have a, a, a more gentler touch to the horses. And for a horse to actually um, break or listen to you, you have to actually 
almost like bend your will to theirs and you know with men you people always you know you people how can i bend my will to someone someone has There's to a bend certain ego to it yeah so th for the equestrian sports like she she just took for her I, I have noticed a lot of them you know over time you have to like shut down the most serious ones or not she kept coming she kept even when her father says oh there's no transport money or she says this is it so we have to have dedication in it so how it shapes you is that okay some people are good in the kitchen some people are good outside don't just subject your children because of their agenda to kitchen roles to this role find where they're all good at and then you let them thrive you let them grow don't just limit and squeeze them just like she said she's not such a good <laughs> you know and it, it has nothing to do with me it has just everything just let your children um thrive in their individuality you get the best of them really that's that's pretty much it now, now, now in terms of um you know being able to defend themselves when they are out there especially at a time when you know you have a handful of miscreants amongst youngsters mostly young boys who tend to either abuse these young young girls out there or sort of uh, bully them in a way are you doing anything in line with self-defense tactics to be able to teach them how to defend themselves in events where they need to do so Yes, so part of the Padded Girl program, it's, it's so encompassing of all of those things that we say. Those from the sex education to self-defense is all part of that. However, if you check all of these sports, from the equestrian sport to the soccer to, 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 to football, there's a, sort, there's, a, there's a sort of tact and, and, and discipline you have to have for you to be able to actually achieve those sports. So for you to even be able to tame a horse, it takes a lot of strength on tact for you to tame a horse. So yes, while you're doing all of that, while we're doing all of the other uh, uh, talking, in each training, it actually not just teaches you about the horse or about the, 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 the career, but it also builds you as a person. For you to be able to tame a horse, it, it takes a lot of you know strength from of the mind and physically for you to tame a horse. So yes. And it's, it's, it's a statement to how much power the girl child Ch has, has exactly because i'm imagining at her age taming a horse and whatnot <laughs> but, but on the place of co-education and yeah using an experience both of us shared and yes. experience it was a day dedicated in a week yes where both young teenage girls be them girls and boys were given a space to interact with supervision mm. I, I know for one that that played a role in shaping how i saw my colleagues, yes. females, and being able to even build the self-esteem to be able to express myself or discuss with them. It, it's a subject I don't feel has really received much of the advocacy on how important it is in society. Do you think it plays a role in disabusing the minds of young boys against abusing girls? Yes. Um, like I said, the sensitization. Over time, um, gender roles have been ingrained from a very young uh, uh, um, age. age that even from our primary school, you see um, the textbooks, they'll say uh, boys are playing football outside while girls are washing plates or sweeping. Uh, father is watching TV while mother is in the kitchen cooking. Okay. So we have to start from those parts. You know, we start talking to each other. And it's not, okay, it's not I hate you, well, yeah, man hating you, man, girl. No, no, no. It's a part of, okay, the society will not live it will not thrive with this way we are going you know you are honestly not even being helpful to yourself by not learning these life skills you know and then it is it is a burden to your your counterpart because you become codependent and too um almost like you're pressing them down so i feel like um the boy child is not and should not be excluded in the society like you said we we had we had a, a weekly thing called ibc uh, back in school where boys and girls we have to integrate like he said so and supervised settings we have to actually clear our minds of all of this over sexualization as adults that we are projecting on children by not having them interact in that level we as adults have over sexualized the society so much so that we think children are doing these things we need to start from ourselves looking at ourselves and being examples of purity that we want to see in the society of hard work and dedication and equality that we want to see in the society you know 
scold a boy child if he is actually talking down on a girl child like that. Currently, we have a partner called uh, Mr. Kabiri Dauda. He runs um, Let's Grow Together Initiative. It's a, it's a boy child initiative where they teach the boy child social skills. They're actually having an event today on the day of the girl child, you know, so that they, they, they can in integrate better with the girl child. I think that is where we're having a disconnect from the grassroots. Let us go back to the grassroots and, you know, go back to that IBC setting, seeing that, okay, boys and girls can be equal in certain spaces. Yes, physically, we cannot doubt that physically there is a disparity, but mentally, that is where it is. Mentally, can this person do this thing? Okay, fine, give it to that person. Don't just say, oh, because she's a girl or she's a boy, he's a boy, they can't do this or they, they should do that. That's pretty much it. So I, I don't know if that has covered it, but that's pretty much how I feel it is. Well, well let me come back to you now. Um, in your stay or the period of time that you have been with um, you know, your mentor here and her, her initiative, have you been able to figure out what exactly you want to be in the future when you probably graduate from the university and uh, delve into the real world? I've really thought about it, yes. Okay. <laughs> There's plenty of time. <laughs> okay, I've thought about it a lot. I, ever since she introduced me to Polo at the Beham Equestrian Center, Yes. I, I've, I'm actually currently waiting for admission in the, into the university. Okay. Yes. And my brother, my brother told me that yeah, school is not actually a limit. You can actually do a lot of things outside school. Certainly. So hopefully, I I would like to continue my polo, but I, I don't, it doesn't mean I'll stop with my school. Yes, um, I want to study nursing. Yes, in school. So if I finish, I can still be shuffling the polo, and because not every time I'll be at the table. So my this is my free times. If I'm not at the table, I'll be at work. Yes, and I also want to encourage other girls out there. So that they should not just limit themselves to house chores and think they, the thing society has led them to think. Yes. That they should think outside the box, that there are a lot of things that they can do. I mean, anybody can do a house chore. It's it's a life uh, saving skill to know how to cook. Yes. Yes. I cook, I cook very well. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now, let, let's talk about some of the cultural norms that also impedes the potential of girl children. Okay. Particularly in the North, there is the challenge of early marriage now some families especially with the current economic situation are now forced into giving out even underage girls into marriage and it's with the place of having initiatives like yours that beyond just polo offer other alternatives is there a a drive towards community engagement in some communities to also afford girls an opportunity to be part of this initiative Okay, so um, the, the Empower Her Choices initiative was birthed for and um, for a, from a place of, okay, um, displaced communities. Um, in Plateau States particularly, there are more than 17 IDP camps now because we have internally displaced um, people. And I think um, from 2021 when I launched my NGO, I was mostly focused on the, the Padded Girl um, initiative. And when I went to these IDP camps and, and rural communities, I see like the major problem was the, 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 the pregnancy rates in teenagers. And it was, a, it's, it's, it, it, was, it, it was really concerning because most of these uh, 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 fathers of these pregnancies were adult men. You'd see a 13, 15 year old and who is, and some of them were like the, the, the IDP volunteers that are supposed to protect these girls. So yes, um, from the cultural part of it, we are really lacking. We are really slacking because I see no reason why a, 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 a setting age of any man or woman will even be standing and talking to a child. What, so sitting sexual favors before you even get that you know so how are we getting to that part that you are even in good conscience saying oh uh i want to marry this child because their parents are in a financial that's that's literally rape to me you know why 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 are grown men because i have not seen i'm not saying there are aren't though but i have not seen a grown woman 
clamoring to marry a, a, a small child a young boy a young boy so I, it, it's usually men so I, I don't know what the problem is i think uh, shame has is lacking in our society lack of integrity and dignity because how are you aroused by a child how are you how are you thinking of 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 of, of laying with a child that you're supposed to protect let's start from there because i don't even know how to even address it around why are you marrying a child what what all of you as even the parents you all gathered as adults and doing that it's a complete degeneration of what uh, even nature has uh, can permit you get my point so i personally I, it's a it's a big fight you know and like i said even to register the name of the NGO was a problem to me because they are saying, oh, preg I'm like, it's literally saying it's against underage pregnancy. pregnancy. But it was almost like they are fighting you. And I'm like, why are you fighting to sleep with a child? Why are you clamoring? What, what, is, the, what is the rationale behind that? You know, so me personally, I'll shame anybody that I see them. They know me around wherever I am. I'll be like, leave these girls alone. And um, the things we do, like I say, we build in the, 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 the mentorship program, we build their esteem. These men don't love you. Because if they love you, they're, they're trying to put you against. When I was younger, I thought I was the bomb to myself, you know. And I'll be like, eh, this man is coming towards me. Eh, this my auntie, did not even see her. Not knowing to me that this person is just a predator. He knows he cannot pray on this other woman. That's why he comes to the little girls. Who, do, so, who doesn't know anything? Who person? doesn't know? So I, I have stopped focusing on the men. Me now, I shame them. What I do now is I focus on the girl child and I tell the girl child, you are enough. These people are way beneath you. A man that doesn't respect himself and is coming to he doesn't have anything good to offer you. And this is not me being jealous. I cannot, what am I jealous of you for? You see, they try to pick this uh, women supporting women, women are the biggest, and it's a lie. They are projecting their own selves onto us. And I try to build this sisterhood and say, do you know what? Don't allow these men come and uh, 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 take, uh, advantage. take advantage of you. Because when they start doing that, you just know they are trying to remove you from a community that protects you. Yes. Don't allow it. Always have your esteem and your guard up. That's pretty much it. Well, well, well let's talk about um, international collaborations. I, yes. I believe you you must have sort of connected with uh, other initiatives or agencies or yes. foundations similar to yours, uh, both locally and internationally. How is yes. that coming along? And, and are you making any progress? Yes, um, we have a few. We have um, Plateau State Government is actually trying to um, look into partnering with us and boosting the, the initiative. Internationally, we have Why Not Her. It's in um, Ireland. It's an Ireland-based um, um, NGO yes. who focuses on the, the girl child and the woman in general, her progress and her empowerment in the society. It's, it's coming along very well. We get to um, share ideas. They get to send um, work materials and resources from like sanitary towels, um, 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 funding towards um, small running arounds that we've been doing in the project. We also have private organizations out there like uh, Mountain Meadows. It's in North Carolina. It's, um, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a ranch, ranch, um, ranch lodge yes. that's um, partner with Tryon, Tryon, Tryon um, International Equestrian Center there in okay. the U United States. Yes. So they have helped in the, building of the project the stable hand training so yes it's coming out nicely and um yeah we we are hoping that more indigenous um ngos and more indigenous organizations get to partner and work with us because the ngo doesn't have like a proper like i wouldn't say a proper structure we get to like partner with local um businesses that do this training so for instance if you offer the stable hands training we come to your organization and bring our students you get to train them which we are partnering with belham equestrian center abuja here in karsana and then we hope to partner with other organizations like artville 
in Joss who are doing welding and sculpting, and then Collabo Designs who are into arts and designs, and then Blue House Technologies who are actually going to be covering our computer literacy program. So yes, we have uh, a few partners on board and we're really open to all the others as well. Yes. Well, we must thank you for taking our time to commemorate the International Day of the Girl Child together with us, and we wish you, you the best in your sojourns. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Well, it's been from Rauta Benedict, an intending university student who, in her spare time, is a student under the Empaha Choices, on the Age Pregnancy Preventive Initiative, and the president herself, Nukurai Martin, who, as would I say, a champion for the course went through teenage pregnancy, came out better, and has decided to be a mentor to young girls to forestall them, you know, being taken advantage of by predators in that space. Well, do note that this episode is available for you to rewatch it on our YouTube channel at ADBN TV.